Aerial scouts of the Ukrainian Security Service have intercepted and targeted a large number of armored combat vehicles and personnel of the occupying Russian army in the eastern direction of the front. Over the past week, the kamikaze drone strikes have destroyed two Buk anti-aircraft missile complexes, worth $40 million each, Jayatsint self-propelled artillery and 18 more artillery and rocket launcher systems, 10 tanks, 33 armored personnel carriers belonging to the occupying army. For air defense systems and one radio electronic countermeasure system, 219 vehicles, including motorcycles, 22 drones, 22 communication antennas, 18 fortifications and firing points, two ammunition depots and hundreds of soldiers were destroyed. A certain number of residents of the Kursk region of the Russian Federation, part of which is controlled by the Ukrainian armed forces, want to move to Ukraine. This was reported on air by Alexei Dmitrashkovsky, a representative of the Ukrainian military commandment's office in the Kursk region on Apostrophe TV. He says that locals treat Ukrainian servicemen very well. Dmitrashkovsky says that in some cases people claim that the Ukrainian armed forces treat them better than the Russian authorities and they are offended by the Kursk region leadership which abandon them and does not take any part in their lives. A fairly large number of people are already saying out loud that they want to leave for Ukraine, that they don't trust their government. According to Dmitrashkovsky, representatives of the Ukrainian defense forces are currently helping residents of the Kursk region with food, firewood, medicine and warm clothes. They are also showing videos with news, informing about what is happening in Ukraine, the Russian Federation and in the world in general. We show the news. We try to inform the population about what is happening in Russia, in the world, in Ukraine. They didn't know anything at all, the soldier said. According to him, the only thing that the residents of Kursk region heard about Ukrainians was that Russian propagandists said, Ukrainians are fascists who kill their children, destroy their cities and abuse their residents. Even one woman said that when Ukrainian soldiers entered the village, they hid in the bushes so as not to be seen by the soldiers because they were scared that they were animals. Today, they tell these stories with a smile on their faces and trust the Ukrainian soldiers, at least they are waiting for our arrival, says Dmitrashkovsky. He added that in the part of Kursk region where the Ukrainian armed forces are located, there are mainly elderly people who suffer from various diseases and there are also small children. In addition, Dmitrashkovsky said that the Russian army is launching attacks on the Kursk region as a result of which 24 Russian citizens have already died and more than 30 have been injured. The Russians understand very well who is shooting at them, the military man said. According to him, the Russian military is also striking infrastructure facilities, water towers, electrical substations, etc. Russians are experiencing a shell famine due to numerous strikes on ammunition depots of the defense forces of Ukraine. According to Defense Express, this was stated by one of Russia's propagandists, Yegor Guzenko. According to him, the Russian army began to experience a shell famine after the destruction of depots in Toropets and Tikhoretsk. Those areas where there is active fighting now, there is this famine in form of limits being felt there. The 98th Airborne Division has problems at Chasiv Yar as well as a number of other units. I will not name them because there are a lot of them. Such problems are currently gaining momentum massively, he said. According to Guzenko, this is a recent phenomenon caused by the destruction of ammunition depots by Ukrainian drone attacks in Toropets, in the Tver region and Tikoretsk, in Krasnodar Krai, in the middle of September and said the attacks were continuing. 
He alleged the issue is particularly affecting those areas of the front where active assault operations are taking place. The 98th Airborne Division has this problem, as do a number of other units. I will not name them because there are too many, he said. He added that the problem was getting worse and rationing of artillery shells was being imposed on some units. He complained that even so, Russian troops were still being forced to assault Ukrainian positions without artillery support. He went on to imply that there was something criminal happening among Russia's commanders. In echoes of the complaints made by Yevgeny Prigozhin, the former leader of the Wagner PMC in May last year, Guzenko opined, but even if this happened, if some of the warehouses were destroyed, it doesn't mean that our factories suddenly stopped. The factories work every day, day and night. This ammunition goes somewhere. The mill blogger then asked, where does this ammunition go? Why is there so few of it for the troops? According to an Estonian intelligence assessment, the strike by the Ukrainian armed forces on the Torapets depot on September the 18th could have destroyed as much as two months worth of Russian artillery ammunition along with Iskander and Tochka U 122mm rockets and aerial bombs.